Hello, here's Sunny and I'm back with another opinion video. This time I'm going to talk about The Sims and more specifically about what makes Sims 2 so much better than Sims 4. First off, I have to say that for me enjoying The Sims is linked to having as much control as possible, which for me is kind of the point of the game, you know, you control your Sims. So just so you know, most of the aspects I'm going to mention this video are based on the background information that I want to rip out my hair whenever my sims go to the fridge and pick something to eat without me telling them to. And yes, this is also true even when they're starving. For me personally, navigating your sims is actually the most impactful aspect when it comes to game experience. And what I'm about to show you is actually more relevant for console players, but I will come to the PC version as well. In Sims 2, you have full control over your sims body because you can literally steer them from a third person perspective. So you can make them run, walk, turn in circles, whatever. And whenever you wish to interact with something, you actually have to walk up to the item and then you can interact. If this feels like too much of a hassle, then you can always detach yourself from your Sims body and do whatever you wish to do um, this way as well. In Sims 4, however, all you can navigate is a literal computer mouse, which makes zero sense to console players because what's the point in having a joystick if it's used to control a mouse? This is also why the game kind of feels like I'm programming something rather than actually playing as my sim. You don't even need to walk up to certain objects to, to interact with them. You can just choose it with a mouse and click it and then you can make your sim do whatever, which they will do if they feel like it, unless they get distracted halfway, which just happened with my sim. In the PC version, it makes more sense to actually navigate the mouse, um, but there you at least have this little sim head that looks in the direction of the options um, and really links you back to the sim you're actually in control of. Obviously, you have far more options in Sims 4 when it comes to the looks of your Sims, but let me show you why quantity doesn't always equal quality. Let's, for instance, talk about the single elements of an outfit. So here, the Sim is wearing a dress, but it is impossible to make her wear a jacket over, uh, over the dress, because when I click on a jacket, what she will do is take off everything except for the jacket. Besides, if we look like at the tops, for instance, you have endless options that are actually barely even different from each other because can someone explain to me what the difference between this and this is except for the color? I don't get it and I don't get why there are two options of this ugly thing and I feel like it's even worse for male sims. I don't know if it's just my taste but to me everything looks the same. You have endless options of different shirts that are basically almost the same thing. I mean look here it, it barely looks any different. It's always the same style so you end up having a bunch of sims that are dressed in more or less the same way. And another thing that makes zero sense to me or also other players if you only play the base game is how you have different outfits for different seasons. Like here you have an outfit option for hot weather and cold weather. And I don't get it because the weather doesn't change. In Sims 2 you obviously don't have that much of a variety when it comes to single items but what you can do is to combine them in whatever way so you can actually put on a shirt and then you can just put on a pullover over that shirt and the game even lets you adjust the I don't know the sleeves and the length of of whatever you're wearing like the jacket for example or even the collar and material and color which is obvious but there is so much more freedom in how you can dress your sim so even if you have fewer options when it comes to single items you actually have more options with um, you know the outfits and experimenting with style and actually having more individual sims another small detail which in my opinion does have an impact on the overall atmosphere is how in sims 2 you actually have a sim that's standing 
in some sort of dressing room you can see a couch in the back background and also a mirror and pictures and photographs it's it's a bit more personal than in sims 4 where you have your sim stand in a literal void this whole quality quantity ratio is relevant not only for your sims looks and appearance but also for their identity and personality you can choose an aspiration so food love creativity family whatever so let's for instance If you now take a look at the personality traits you can assign your sims, you will see that there's a bunch of options actually, but you can only choose three options for your adult sims. And I think this is very restricting. And also if you look at the traits, you will see that they are quite random and don't add anything to your sims personality. So for instance, you can say that she's, she's happy. <laughs> But for me, this is completely oh, irrelevant and doesn't say anything about her personality, especially if you can only choose three options. Meanwhile, in Sims 2, you have this opposition system. So you have 10 personality traits and five oppositions and a restricted number of points that you can distribute between those oppositions. So for instance, you can say that your Sim is rather outgoing, but also sloppy and serious something like that. So I think this makes it much easier to actually uh, give your sim a certain personality. And then you even have zodiac signs, which I find quite funny. And one of the aspects that actually annoy me the most in The Sims 4 are sim interactions. And I have to admit that in Sims 4 it's far more authentic and realistic than in Sims 2, but it's a nightmare for control freaks like me. In Sims 4 you can actually have several Sims engage in one conversation. And sometimes Sims will even randomly join conversation even though you made only two Sims talk to each other. And this can be very complicated and it's easy to use overview especially in crowded places like this one apart from all of this being complicated and you losing overview and all that it's also very hard to establish certain relationships between sims so let's say i want sim 1 and sim 2 to become friends it's very hard to do so when you have a third or even fourth or fifth sim uh, who keeps you know interrupting this interaction and you have this friendship bar that won't change over hours sometimes because you you can't really control what your sims are doing and which sim is talking to which sim besides you again have the quality quantity problem even in this context so let's look at the options we have when interacting with other sims so when i click here you can see that you actually have some kind of structure so you can have options to romance them or funny options or friendly mean options whatever so there is a structure in, in the interactions which I appreciate but if you take a closer look at the options you will see that is actually always the same thing so let's say I want to be funny with this sim and then you choose stories you have funny story, you have inappropriate story, you have a story about robots or whatever. And it's the same when you want to make a joke. You have several types of jokes that actually are all the same because whatever you choose, your sim will make the same movements, say the same things, probably. And it also doesn't have any impact on the friendship. So one joke is not better than the other or more effective when it comes to establishing friendships. It's actually always the same thing. And whenever you're sick of having a conversation with a certain sim, what you have to do is to actually exclude him from the conversation by saying goodbye to him, for instance. Because if you just interrupt this whole action, she will not talk to anyone anymore. And this is very complicated if you want certain sims to interact with each other, but want to exclude others. If you say goodbye to one sim, and then you go to say goodbye to another sim, 
that first sim can just rejoin the conversation, which is very, very annoying. It's a different story when you take a look at Sims 2. So here you can actually interact with one sim only. And when you do that, everything else will actually become blurry and you will have a full focus on the conversation between your sims. And here the single options actually do matter. So whether you slap that person or try to impress him, the animations will actually be different. What I also find very helpful in Sims 2 is this point system. So when you do something, you will see how many points you get for that conversation. And when you pass a certain threshold, then you can establish a friendship or become enemies or whatever the options are. Nonetheless, those complicated sim interactions aren't the only reason why I don't enjoy getting to know new sims. Because one major problem you have in Sims 4 is that your sims will actually forget about other sims when you don't interact regularly. Unless you have the perk um, friend of the world. But this takes very long to get unless you use cheats. But it's very annoying that you talk to a sim and then your sim will actually forget them again so you cannot access them whenever you want to. So let's say you want to throw a party, then you can do just that by just choosing the mobile phone option here and throwing a party, but you will be restricted to the sims your sim knows in that very moment. And that can be very restricting because you first have to get to know a lot of sims and then you can throw a big party, which again is realistic and authentic, but also very time consuming. In Sims 2, on the other hand, you have this holy telephone where you can just throw a party and a bunch of Sims will just come to your house and come to your party, regardless of whether your Sim knows them or not. And this is a very helpful option when you want your sim to make as many contacts as possible and besides they won't forget them anymore. As I mentioned before, in Sims 4 you don't really have different weathers and I, I know that different seasons come with different packs but rain is something you have in every season. But in Sims 4 you always have sunny weather, you only have day and night, but it's always the same. It always looks like a, a normal summer day. And I think this is why, it, why it's so unnecessary to, ha to have all those different outfit categories. In Sims 2 you don't have great variety when it comes to weather either but you occasionally have some rain. And this is actually very sweet because it doesn't have a great impact on the game itself, but you will see that your sims will take an umbrella or a newspaper over their head when they go out while it's raining. <laughs> Lastly, I want to mention something seemingly insignificant, namely the sims interactions with the aquariums. This might be oddly specific, but this is actually one of the things I enjoyed the most when playing Sims 2. So you have your aquarium and you can actually interact with the fish inside of it. So you can feed, it, feed them and the more you feed them, the more fish you will actually have. And then you can catch those fish and eat them. But you can, of course, also just leave them be. And you also occasionally have to clean your aquarium. So generally speaking, it's very interactive. So you can actually do something with it. In Sims 4, it's different. So here, the great advantage is that you can actually catch the fish you're going to put in your aquarium yourself. But the problem is that you can only have one fish per aquarium. And you, I think, if I remember correctly, there are only three aquariums, but it's always the same. It's just one fish per aquarium. And all you can do with that fish is to name them and that's it. Or you can place them back in your inventory. But this is no interaction. You can't do anything with the fish. You can't feed it. You can't look at it, you can't do nothing. So it's just 
swimming around in this bowl and that's just pretty sad okay so those were all the important things i needed to get off my chest i bet i have forgotten about something but yeah let me know what your opinions are on this subject what your expectations are of the new sims project and if you agree or disagree with me and i hope you enjoyed the video and hope to see you next time